Awe. True to Kaisar. carried out Kaisar's will, but I must confiscate your equipment again. You are free to leave.
Our way. True to Kaisar. Some of the slaves have been spreading stories about them. You must enter Kaisar's tent alone. Should have brought some. Oh. I felt the ground shake a while ago. I'll take that as a sign you've got the job done. Let's press on, shall we? As I was telling you before, I want Mr. House out of the picture. You have an interest in his death, too. If he knows that you destroyed his gadgets beneath the fort, he will strike back. You know where to find him. How he dies, I leave up to you. What did you want to know? My Praetorians embody the martial ideals of my legion. Each one of them has done enough conquering and killing to deserve the rank of Kentorian. Instead, I invited them to join my guard. So the invitee chooses whichever current guard he thinks is weakest and challenges him. The fight is to the death. It keeps them from getting complacent. Lucius has been the head of my guard for five years now. He was a subordinate guard for eight before that. No invitee has dared to challenge him yet. Maybe it's an issue of respect. He is getting on in years. What else did you want to know? Wulpes is the best of my frumentari. A remarkable individual from an unremarkable tribe south of the Utah. He was brought into the Legion as a boy, survived training, fought well enough as a legionary to be promoted to the rank of Decanus. Then in battle against an unimportant tribe, he broke ranks and led his contubernium through a hole in their defenses to capture its chieftain. Well, his Kentorian wanted him crucified for disobedience, so I made him a frumentari. Whatever I require, infiltration, assassination, Dramatic atrocities to break the spirit of the enemy, etc. They're mentally flexible. They operate behind enemy lines for extended periods, imitating the enemy's customs without becoming sullied. In all these things, Wolpus is a master. What else did you want to know? Linnaeus is the greatest of my battlefield commanders. Some might call him a great man, but I'm not sure he qualifies. Once, he was the greatest warrior of the Hydebarks, a tribe of the Arizona. Maniacal in battle. Sometimes he'd ambush Legion patrols by himself. When after several months we found and surrounded the Hydebarks camp, their chieftain raised a banner of surrender. The warrior who was not yet Linnaeus went insane with rage. He struck down his chieftain and attacked his own tribe. He killed 15 before they brought him down. He didn't die, obviously. I had him tended to. He was maimed, most of his face torn off. It was days before he regained consciousness. When he did, I went to his bedside and showed him the helmet I'd had forged to cover his face. I said he could have it if he'd fight for me. He accepted on condition that he be allowed to kill the surviving males of his tribe. I said, make it the adult males, and you have a deal. The Neus is savage, savagely loyal too, but only to me. He has no love for my legion, but this has its uses. He has no attachment to his men, no compunction about battlefield losses. All he cares about is destroying the enemy. When another Legatus or a Kenturian fails to achieve results, I send Linnaeus to make things right. 
His first step is to beat the failed commander to death in front of his assembled troops. Then he orders the ritual of Decimatio. It means decimation, but in ancient Rome, the word had a very specific meaning, a punishment for cowardice. The legionaries are lined up in ranks. Every 10th man steps forward and is beaten to death by his brothers. It instills a certain robust obedience. Yes, this time my legionaries will be more frightened of the commander behind them than the enemy before them. There will be no failure this time, no retreat, no years of gathering slaves and resources for another assault. With Linnaeus to drive the legion forward, the dam will be taken. It will be our bridgehead across the Colorado. It's not going to happen again. That's all I have to say about it. And I've heard it's a bad idea to tempt the wrath of Kaisar. Change the subject. What else did you want to know? Do you want my opinion as a former citizen or future conqueror? Actually, my opinion's the same either way. As a young man, I was taught to venerate President Tandy of Shady Sands, the founding mother of the new California Republic. Did you know her presidency lasted 52 years? And that her father, Aradesh, was the Republic's first president? Does that sound like a democracy to you? Or a hereditary dictatorship? Because the council didn't dare oppose her. She was too popular. She had the people's love. So things ran smoothly, more or less. And as soon as she was gone, as soon as there really could be democracy, what happened then? Ever since losing its queen, the NCR has been weaker, more diffuse. Democracy has been its weakness, not its strength. Greed runs rampant. The government is corrupt accepting bribes from Brahmin barons and landowners to the detriment of citizens. The NCR is a loose conglomerate of individuals looking out for themselves. It's lost virtue. No one cares about the collective, the greater good. It's not built to last. I'm just hastening the inevitable. Of course, the most powerful my legion has faced. Also the first to which I am ideologically opposed. Until now, every tribe I've conquered has been so backwards and stunted, enslavement has been a gift bestowed upon them. My conquest of the Mojave will be a glorious triumph, marking the transition of the Legion from a basically nomadic tribe to a genuine empire. Just as my namesake campaigned in Gaul before he crossed the Rubicon, so have I campaigned and will cross the Colorado. What else did you want to know? I know he's a coward, hiding behind an army of robots ensconced in that tower of his like a wizard in one of those grognack comic books. Some say he's a man, others a machine. I don't care. He's in the way. What else did you want to know? I've analyzed the region's tribe to determine how they might be useful. I may tell you more at a later time, if it suits me. What else did you want to know? Ironically, I was born a profligate myself, a citizen of the NCR. My family lived not far from the Great Boneyard. After raiders killed my father, my mother sought the followers' protection. I was two years old. She found work at their library, cooking and cleaning. I learned how to read and Soon I was taking courses, free of charge. Oh yes, raised in that tradition. And the teaching stuck. I was taught it was my responsibility to bring the torch of knowledge to the waste. I may have taken the torch part more literally than they intended. When I was 20, the followers sent me east to Grand Canyon. 
It was my first expedition. Just me and a physician named Calhoun. As an anthropologist and linguist, my assignment was to learn the dialects of the Grand Canyon tribes. What a fucking waste of time. If you think it's worthwhile to make smart people learn how to talk like backward savages, you're a follower of the apocalypse. Or an idiot. Anyway, we met up with a Mormon missionary who already knew a bunch of dialects. Joshua Graham. He was supposed to teach me. But before that went too far, the Blackfoot tribe captured us to hold us for ransom. They were a backward bunch. But the real problem was, they didn't know how to fight. The Blackfoot were at war with seven other tribes. Each just as pissant as they were. But outnumbered like that, they weren't going to last long. It's one thing to be taken hostage, another to be lashed to a sinking ship. So over Calhoun's objections, I decided to take certain steps. I taught them how to use the guns they already had, how to strip and clean them, how to breathe when pulling a trigger, how to reload ammunition. They looked at me like I was some kind of a sorcerer. So I taught them how to make explosives and started drilling them on small unit tactics. If there's anything I learned as a follower of the apocalypse, it's that there's a lot of good information in old books. Duide et impira, divide and conquer. I led the Blackfoot against the Ridgers, their weakest enemy. When they refused to surrender, I ordered every man, woman, and child killed. When next we surrounded the Kaibabs, and they likewise refused, I took one of their envoys to the Ridgers' village and showed him the corpse piles. This was new for the tribes, you see. They played at war, raiding each other, a little rape and pillage here, a little ransoming there. I showed them total warfare. Like I said, there's a lot you can learn from old books. Kaibobs joined me, and the Fredonians after that. All the pissant tribes with names that should be forgotten. I knew from the start I'd need to eradicate this plague of tribal identities, replacing them with a monolithic culture, a uniform identity. So that's what I did once my confederation of tribes was large enough. I crowned myself Kaisar and created a single great tribe, my legion. I sent Calhoun, the follower captured with me back west with a message that I should not be interfered with. Joshua Graham, the Mormon interpreter, stayed with me and served as my first legatus. That's right. Decades of warfare, absorbing lesser tribes, gathering power, forging the dross into a vast, razor-sharp scythe. My legion's expansion has never ceased. Much of the Utah and Colorado and all of Arizona and New Mexico are mine. We have cities of our own, but nothing compared to Vegas. Finally, my legion will have its Rome. What else did you want to know? I used Imperial Rome as the model for my legion precisely because it was so foreign, so alien. I'd seen what had become of the NCR's attempts to emulate the culture of pre-war America, the infighting, the corruption. Rome was a highly militarized autocracy that effectively integrated the foreign cultures it conquered. It dedicated its citizens to something higher than themselves, to the idea of Rome itself. In Rome, I found a template for a society equal to the challenges of the post-apocalyptic world, a society that could and would survive, a society that could prevent mankind from fracturing and destroying itself in this new world by establishing a new Pax Romana. It means a nationalist, imperialist, totalitarian, homogenous culture that obliterates the identity of every group it conquers. Long-term stability at all costs. The individual has no value beyond his utility to the state, whether as an instrument of war or production. No, I'll destroy it because it's inevitable that it be destroyed. It's Hegelian dialectics, not personal animosity. How do I put this basically enough? It's a philosophical theory, the kind you might encounter if you took time to read some books. The fundamental premise is to envision history as a sequence of dialectical conflicts. 
Each dialectic begins with a proposition, a thesis, which inherently contains or creates its opposite, an antithesis. Thesis and antithesis. The conflict is inevitable. But the resolution of the conflict yields something new, a synthesis, eliminating the flaws in each, leaving behind common elements and ideas. The bombs wiped the slate clean. Human civilization descended to a level of ignorance that effectively set our cultural progress back to zero. The NCR has all the problems of the ancient Roman Republic. Extreme bureaucracy, corruption, extensive senatorial infighting. Just as with the ancient Republic, it is natural that a military force should conquer and transform the NCR into a military dictatorship. Thesis and antithesis. The Colorado River is my Rubicon. The NCR Council will be eradicated. But the new synthesis will change the Legion as well, from a basically nomadic army to a standing military force that protects its citizens and the power of its dictator. What else did you want to know? It's called an auto doc. As the name suggests, it's an automated physician, more or less. He can treat broken bones, cuts, punctures, scrapes. Sometimes I bestow its use upon someone I favor. Makes for a powerful gift in a culture that forbids painkillers and is largely ignorant of medical science. Good. Don't know what kind of security he has inside the Lucky 38, but if you can find a way of catching him off guard, do so. I suspect you'll be a valuable asset to the Legion, assuming you're really on our side, of course. There's a gambler, Martina Grosbeck, who has a knack for learning other people's secrets and passing that information along for a price. The Omertas, who run Gamora, have become suspicious of Martina's frequent visits to their casino. Soon they'll pay her a visit of their own. Good. Martina frequents the Vault 21 gift shop on the Strip. Hurry along, and she still may be in one piece by the time you get there. Was there more for us to discuss? To call the news ferocious would be an understatement. In battle, he seizes the enemy in his jaws and will not let go. He thinks nothing of suffering losses, so long as the enemy suffers more. Though unsubtle, he is not dim. He detects traps and sets his own. Be glad you will not have to face his judgment. If you are true to Kaiser. Wale. Are you ready to return to Cottonwood Cove? Very well.
I tell you, not at home is gonna have his day. Don't worry. I'll stay out of trouble from now on. Honest. I may have overheard some things at Gamora that I passed on to the NCR. That's all. Honest. What? I only talked to Captain Curtis over at McCarran. I would never work at Slavers. Honest. It isn't normally. The NCR wanted me to just gamble and listen, nothing else. No. Well, not really. I mean, I'm not listening through doors or sneaking around or anything. People talk out loud, and I just pay attention. The NCR likes to keep tabs on the activities of the families, and they pay me good caps to hang around the casinos and keep my ears open. Okay. I do odd jobs here and there usually helping Sarah keep the vault tidy. I came to New Vegas to be a professional gambler. Too bad for me that the professional part isn't working out so good, but I love gambling, so I'm here to stay on the strip until they kick me out. Goodbye. This ain't your business. Walk off and forget you saw anything. Shit. Look, we're just following orders. We, uh, need to take this up with the boss. Thank you. They were going to kill me. I'll be fine. Eventually. Goodbye.
have you done this? Centuries of preparation. So much good undone. Slavery! The future of mankind? What have you done? May there be a hell for you, a Tartarus! Bleak, unending. Was there more for us to discuss? I know the captain well. If you wish to be of service, go talk to him. Bear in mind that you are now responsible for guarding the secret of his true allegiance. If the NCR finds out, we'll know how that happened. Excellent. Had you simply killed them, the Omertas would have sent another group after Martina eventually. You've saved me the trouble of coming up with a more permanent solution. And Martina is free to go about her business as usual. Well done. Wale. I've read Mr. House's obituary. Had a high opinion of himself, didn't he? With Mr. House out of the way, I can focus on smoothing out a few... Lingering complications elsewhere in the Mojave. First up are the boomers of Nellis Air Force Base, a tribe so reclusive it lobs artillery shells at anyone who comes near their settlement. I want you to offer them an alliance with my legion. My terms are simple. Target their guns against the NCR side of the dam when I assault it, and they can keep their freedom. If you find they aren't amenable to this offer, destroy them. Good. Your first challenge will be to reach their settlement without getting blown up. After that, it should be easy. Awe, true to Kaisar. It is a great honor for anyone outside the Legion to get an audience with Kaisar. We recently obtained an artillery weapon, but we don't have the part or the skill to fix it. The trader, Dale Barton, salvaged it from a military base in Arizona. Yuma, I believe. The best marksmen of the NCR are usually at the rear of any battle. The gun will allow us to strike at them. The tribe calling themselves the Boomers is obsessed with such weapons, I've been told. You could probably find a spare firing mechanism there. He's the best warrior in the Legion. A full legionary by the time he was 12, he's never lost a battle. 
Had the Legate been in command during the Battle of Hoover Dam, the Legion would have won. I have no doubt about that. No. Legate Lanius is Kaisar's second. The Legate replaced the Burned Man after the Legion's defeat at the Dam several years ago. The Burned Man was Kaisar's advisor and general when the Legion was originally formed. The Burned Man led us to a disastrous defeat at the Dam. On Kaisar's orders, the Burned Man was covered in pitch by the Praetorian Guard, lit on fire, and cast into the Grand Canyon. Kaisar has forbidden us from ever speaking his true name again. And so we simply refer to him as the Burned Man. It's a tradition in the Praetorians to specialize in unarmed combat, because weapons can break or jam when needed most. However, our unarmed techniques favor offense over defense. We can charge the enemy and flatten him with our first strike before he can react. Of course. This will take some time, and I'm not a forgiving teacher. Yes. Do you have something to report? I'll answer if I can. When I was a boy, the Legion conquered my tribe. I was chosen for training as a Legionary. I fought in many battles for the Legion. Eventually, Kaisar chose me to lead his Praetorian Guard. It was a great honor. The girls and women were enslaved, and many of the men and boys were also chosen to become Legionaries. The rest were killed. We were savages. The Legion raised us up, made us better than what we were. What did you want to talk about? Very well. Wally, 